Welcome back, guys, to another great episode of the Geek Centurions. Well, it should be a great episode of the Geek Centurions. And I'm here. It's your boy Eli, and I'm here with Joe. How's it going? I yeah, know it's been Joe the whole past few weeks, but we've been busy, and it's been really busy. he's the quickest guy I can get to. Yeah, you know. It's, it's, you know, it's it's fine. Family, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I don't mind doing these stuff. So yeah, makes it easier for you to edit because you know where to cut. I mean, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, okay. So we wanted to keep it light, you know. Um, that recently, you know, we enjoy we're, we're we're gamers. We like we like to play video games. Yeah, that's a uh, fair assessment. Yeah, you know, we we're, we're trying to get that a Series X and that PS Five and all that good stuff, Cyberpunk and. Spider-Man. Yeah, you know, a gaming as a whole has been pretty huge as of late, right? Like, it's probably, I think, the uh, biggest entertainment industry at this point. Yeah, it's starting to be uh, movies, surprisingly. Yeah, well, you know, with microtransactions, they sort of get a <laughs> lot of money out of people with that way. Oh, no, you, you mean they scam people. <laughs> Listen, all right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if if a lot of governments around the world and even the U.S. are trying to look in to see if the loot boxes and all that stuff is gambling, then, well, you know, we clearly have a problem, right? I mean, didn't uh, people in Denmark, or was it Denmark, or... It was uh, the Netherlands. The Netherlands. They banned loot boxes, they I banned. believe. And that, that might be working to you. Speaking of loot boxes, um, recently there has been a news in the, in the gaming industry. Um, I, I feel like we can go into loot boxes a bit. And part of, it's because it's basically part of this huge discussion that we're having. Kind of, kind of, yeah, yeah. But I mean, we can we can elaborate in the loot box issue too. But essentially, what our 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 what our topic is today is essentially we're talking about the whole Marvel's Avengers because you know we're also comic book geeks and stuff like that. And Marvel's Avengers was probably one of the big um, announcements that ever came out out of E three or whatever and all this cool stuff. Yeah, I believe. If I remember correctly, it was announced in 2018, all right? I want to say it was earlier than that. No, it was uh, 2017, 2018 is when Square Enix had announced they had, they got the license and were making a Avengers game, which mm-hmm. I think the last time there was a quote-unquote Avengers game was going to be by THQ. Mm-hmm. That was going to be sort of released close to when the movie was going to come out, but then yeah. THQ fell under and, you know, you got that whole sort of thing. But, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, 20, 2017, 2018, they released a, a video. They just, It was basically just a teaser of just, like, where they were going with it. And then in 2019, at Square Enix's press conference at E3, uh, I think they closed the show with uh, finally showing gameplay, or at least footage of event marvel's avengers and uh ever since it's been sort of uh um yeah uh kind of a reaction yeah it's yeah it's been like a very big like uphill battle for a lot of people right because i think one of the biggest complaints just like um just from just from what uh was shown at that e3 press conference because it, uh, it was just that uh like the art style of the game was yeah, definitely... the design style and you and i have talked about that numerous times specifically for some characters and we'll, we'll go over it more in, in later but like it just doesn't look that appealing it looks very much to, to sum it down to sum it up basically it's like diet avenger it's the diet actors of the avenger movies yeah, yeah, a lot of people see see it as some sort of weird knockoff of the MCU design, which the MCU, at least compared to the comics, is very sort of, uh, I guess, ultimate slash mm-hmm. a bit more realistic takes on how the characters look in a real world setting. Like, in the comics, in classic comics, uh, Captain America, for example, has like these little like wings on his cap that I just point mm-hmm. out. You know, he has... It looks, you know, obviously it looks kind of goofy because it's comic and stuff. And in the movies, they've sort of streamlined that to be more of like a emblem on his helmets and mm-hmm. stuff. And even in the uh, End Game, Cap's yeah. final suit has the iconic little uh, the little little um, scales scales that a lot of his costumes in the movies don't have, but is a, a, a huge feature in the comics. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, like in here, however, in in, in uh, Marvel's Avengers by Square Enix, uh, he looks basically just like a guy that's wearing Riot SWAT gear, yeah, with, like 
uh, American, uh, like, spray paint and stuff. Yeah, like I said, we'll go further into it, but I'm about to sum it up to people's thoughts on it. It's like that scene from the movie Spaceballs where, like, they're chasing the the actors, the main actors are being chased around by the, by the villains, and they catch them, and they're like, oh, you thought you can escape me, and we don't see the, the guy, their faces, but when they turn around, it's clearly the stunt doubles. Even the, yeah, the guy's like, you idiots, these are not them. These are their stunt doubles. It's like, you know. Yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. That's a very common joke I think a lot of people make about yeah. the, the design of the MCU. And, and you, you know, characters. when it first came out, I think the game was reviewed, was started off being reviewed kind of like, it's okay. But as, as time progressed. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't go so well. Yeah. Um, uh, if you, I mean, if anyone has known about the gaming industry for a while, uh, there's been sort of this trend of the live service uh, game, mm-hmm. um, where basically the game is essentially set up to be a sort of live service. Like each week or every month or so, there's like new content updates to keep people engaged because they want people to play a game constantly for as long as possible and drop as much money as possible on it, right? Um, I think the biggest, I think, game to do something like this, because I won't count MMOs, because MMOs are just completely, like, yeah, their own category of this sort of live service kind of game, mm-hmm. because MMOs are supposed to be, like, huge, gigantic like, yeah. experiences you're going to go into, like, World of Warcraft, I think, Final Fantasy fourteen, fourteen Destiny. Uh, I mean... It, it, it falls in the middle. Yeah, Destiny, I would say, is, like, the, one, the trendsetter for this stuff, because it falls in between like yeah you have like these hub areas where you can interact and stuff but you're you're not gonna be like seeing like 50 people all in the same like world map Mm -hmm. like fighting like a boss uh like raids are only like six people and i think like you know people will just drop in and out of the the world map and stuff and you only see like a couple people in destiny or whatever Mm -hmm. but it was essentially like in Despite, you know, like, being very sort of, eh, it made a lot of, enough money that where everybody else was like, as long, if we could make Destiny, but better, we could get out of the gold mine here. Mm-hmm. And I think the, I think the good example you were trying to go with was Fortnite. Uh, Fortnite, kind of, sort of. I mean, it, 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 it it's not like, when, when people talk about, like a, like, like, a live service game, it's sort of, like, the same, mono- like, sort of the same sort of grind to get mm-hmm. gear. Yeah. I guess the better term would be, like, it's a live service game. Avengers and Destiny are live service games, but they primarily, uh, the, primar- the primary content is, like, a looter grinder, right? Mm-hmm. Like, um, you know, Destiny is sort of trademarked as a looter shooter, where you shoot, it's an FPS but your main goal is to just get better and better loot over time, mm-hmm. right? And in a similar way, um, for you know people who aren't familiar with uh, how the Avengers game is played, uh, it is a it's of a similar fashion. It's uh, you constantly after you're done with the main campaign, uh, your your sort of end game is to get stronger and stronger by completing missions and getting better loot over time. To, you know, so. That's sort of the idea, I guess, for a lot of these sort of and, and light source games. And I don't really consider Fortnite kind of like that because mm. it's a, well, one, it's a battle royale. I mean, uh, I, I've seen the connection with Fortnite. That's why I brought it up. Yeah, like I, I get why why you would connect it with Fortnite because every sort of month or so they have these seasons and there's new content and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, here, it's, uh, it's just more of like you want to keep playing to get new costumes and new like. Um, mm-hmm cosmetics and stuff in in avengers and destiny and the division and like all these other sort of things like anthem like it's the gear the the gear and the weapons are supposed to make you strong enough to you know keep doing the thing right there's like it's the endless grind is what i i Mm. I feel and fortnite there is not really much of a grind like the only grind would be probably just playing enough so that way you increase your battle pass or whatever Mm, fair enough I think that's where a connection they have with Destiny because they can't, with I'm sorry with Avengers because they kind of have that sort of thing going on. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, uh, um, 
uh, Des- uh, Avengers, uh, Marvel's Avengers, uh, I think touted in like at the E3 conference at in 2019 because uh, loot boxes were like are still seen today as a sort of a, a, a not great thing that most gamers would agree is not fun. No, right? it's it's basically gambling. <laughs> Yeah, like, listen, I get it if you're going to put some sort of weird gambling mechanic thing in, like, a mobile free free game. Because, one, it's a free game. Mm-hmm. So you can waste. That's how you, they get money. But the oh, the constant uh, argument is that if I'm paying 60 and I guess now $70 yeah. uh, because of next-gen uh, games possibly being that high, especially uh, mostly on PlayStation, I think. I, uh, but yeah, if you're, if you're going to be paying $60, $70 for a game and there's already like stuff like a season pass and stuff like that, um, why am I, why are you having a system where I get to, where I have to buy things through loot boxes and stuff? And giving the chance, and there's a lot of times where the chances are very like, yeah, we get it as gambling chances are slim, but it's like on the, like, it's just, it's, it's in a way where it's not even fun. I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot of these sort of, uh, like, a lot of these sort of, like, loot boxes things that I, I think that I've seen, they don't, I don't think they really show you, like, the chance of getting a rare item, right? No, they don't. Especially in Avengers, they don't. Yeah. Um, which, to give credit to a bunch of gotcha games on, on mobile, they at least tell you, you the rates. A, you son of a bitch. They tell you the rates you of and when you get... Damn gotchas. Listen, all right. We won't, we won't discuss this, but I am familiar with the gotcha trend in mobile games, and I'll say this: they at least tell you what chances you're gonna have on getting a certain character or thing you need. It, lo- lo- it, Overwatch loot boxes—they don't give you that. They just like pray to God you get a cool skin for a character you even want, right? Because watch you play overwatch you get a loot box a seasonal loot box and then you get you're hoping for like i don't know like uh the ne- the new mercy skin or a mccree skin and then you get fucking junk rat like legendary skin you, you see this is you see that's the thing uh this actually happened to him a bunch of times i know this you know i've i've, I've been lucky on some occasions but other times you've been trying to like, get that mercy skin for a long time i mean that was a long time ago because <laughs> i stopped playing overwatch quite a while ago so the point is listen i understand i try to get the 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 reaper halloween costume yeah i i think uh yeah it, you know the point the, the point being that loot boxes essentially have taken away sort of the way of like i think a lot of old school gamers or at least get a lot of gamers from like back in the early no, 2000s no, 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 obviously we're talking about the 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 mechanics of the game, but what essentially was the problem with Avengers as a game? Because what most people, if, if you don't know, m- most people out there, Avengers essentially lost a crap, a crap ton of money for, for Square Enix. I'm trying to find, I had it right here. Here we go. They apparently, lo- re- Square Enix reports a $48 million loss following the Avengers game. Yeah, which said which is not not great i mean a couple weeks ago there was stories of at least the pc player base being less than a like entering like less than a thousand players and for and and to point this out like avengers is also a co-op sort of experience you get to play with three other people granted you can play by yourself with the ai but for like i think harder like the more in-game style of to get to get the feel, the real feel of the game. Yeah, like the higher, the highest of difficulty stuff. You need like three other people, and on PC, uh, through the Steam charts, they were like, it's starting to go down less than a thousand. It's probably well over less than a thousand at this point, at the time of recording. So that sort of raises the question of like, yeah, there's no content here by the end of the day, and that's sort of the uh, the thing about these sort of games. Uh, it just seems like if you don't have these sort of live service games planned out with a steady stream of content coming your way after launch, which is funny because, well, actually, I'll discuss it a little bit later. Uh, which you know, it's it just means that 
you did it, it pretty much means that your game is sort of kind of dead on arrival because once yeah. people have finished and gotten to the end game of the current base game it's like well what now yeah that's how it felt because like i you know i tend to you know stream on my own i was playing the avengers and for the most part um i'm gonna say this as, as the game as is at base it's kind of lacking there's a building block that could make it a great game the story started off pretty okay and then it just kind of like went nowhere like stuff happens and i'm like oh are we wait wait why are we jumping why are we jumping you know hoops you know you should go to point a to point b why are you going to point a to point c to point f to point whatever you know i'm just meaning the story structure because like there's moments i'm like wait wait, wait i think we just skipped a, a, a mention and you know what i'm talking about yeah i mean the story um is serviceable at least um because i think our point of view characters kamala uh, uh miss marvel yeah yeah miss marvel um and you know you get to see her sort of go in her own but there's a lot of sort of like weird jumps because we're switching between different characters and the game is the avengers so you want to play all the different avengers so there's i think that might have been an issue in terms of like all right, we want to have Kamala be our protagonist for this story, but obviously we we know that players are going to want to play as their favorite Avengers, so at some point we have to do these weird sort of jumps mm -hmm. here and there. Not, not to mention, it's very it's very like hard to follow sometimes. Like don't get me wrong, at first it was fine because like Kamala is our point of view character, but you know once the, be the story begins, you know she gets hit with the Terrigen Mist and you know develops her powers. And then we skip five years later, or however long it was, and like she's already had mastery of her powers. And I'm like, wait, 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 we just skipped like one a very important moment of like character origins. You gotta establish this character who many people who pro and this, I'm saying like as as you know general uh, game video game fans, general audiences and all that stuff that don't know about Kamala, you kind of need to develop like her her origin well and you kind of don't you kind of like go in there expecting like you already know who she is i who read the comics know who she is know the relationship between with her family and all that good stuff but like you don't really get that aside from her dad and that's only in the first mission yeah i i, I definitely agree with that like as someone who reads comics but not in not, not as much as you i had a cursory knowledge of kamala and it, it was it's such a weird thing that you just skip over her discovering her powers and learning how to use them it would have been which is weird because it's a video game it would have which is full of you know in-game tutorials on teaching you how to use mm. your powers so it would have made perfect sense if it would just like it, it's your it's to your tutorial with kamala mm -hmm. right or it's like you learn as she learns Mm -hmm. constantly and which it kind of does that at least when you get to like some of her later powers like her ultimate ability and stuff like that but it's just so like you got you got rid of like the like one of the big things of like a superhero story when the when they learn about their powers and how to use them mm -hmm. and it's just like yeah we're just gonna skip ahead we don't need to get it we need to get straight into the action it's like i mean okay i guess but like it's you know but yeah no it's i think story-wise it's fine it's serviceable and it definitely i mean to an extent but you know i was saying but, if, but i'm saying after pre completing the game you feel like you want to do at least some more and yeah there's missions in between the, the main story but and, and, I, and i feel like this is this is this isn't a negative i didn't mind this because specifically because i played more like whole captain america guys who are known to who are characters that are in the game who are well known for like mowing down enemies so it wasn't that hard for me, but for a lot of people, if you chose certain characters, it might not be the best. Because the way the gameplay is set up, it's not very engaging. Yeah, yeah. The game is essentially you beating up robots and you know, and various and, and sometimes supervillains uh, for like, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight hours. Sounds about right. Yeah, that's sort of the main story because it's it's aim, it's Modoc, you've got robots, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And on the one hand, it, it 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 it's fun when you're playing like I guess the Hulk, right? Because it just it, you know, because he's he's the Hulk, he's meant to like bust mm -hmm. a lot of heads. 
But at the same time, given the way the game is structured as sort of a an endless like loot grinding thing, you like it feels so off sometimes when the Hulk takes about three hits to just beat up a random like small time Luke enemy. Mm-hmm. I get with boss fights like it's gonna take a while, right? Bigger character, bigger enemy characters, bigger enemy characters too, and you know, and the giant robots and stuff. Yeah, it's gonna take a while for the Hulk. Hulk, but like when it comes to like the small fry, it just feels a bit unsatisfying. Yeah, and same thing with like here's the thing. Here's the, here's the, here's a credit I will uh, I will give Avengers, and I will always give it. Each character has a unique fighting style. Yeah, certainly. Like every character feels different, and they feel unique. And they have different strengths and, you know, that stuff like that. Uh, It's just that, like, when you're playing against, it just feels like you're, like, not powerful, right? Yeah. Sometimes, like, it just feels like you don't feel as strong as you feel like you should be. Unless you grind. Even then, like, um, uh, even then, if you grind and get, like, higher level gear, it still feels like a chore to just take on waves of enemies yeah because like i mean the one thing i've always heard is that people I prefer you know this character i heard some people prefer captain america captain america hulk and that that's mine i heard some people prefer black widow perhaps some people prefer iron man uh, i don't know who do you which other characters do you play that which do you prefer uh yeah I, I i tend to lean towards uh hulk iron uh, iron man, uh cap and like black widow i think it's just because uh Black Widow just has a lot of versatility at, mm-hmm. in terms of movement and stuff. Hulk is just like the tank <laughs> character, and I know a lot of people sort of feel like they don't like him as much because of that. Where like he essentially a lot of his abilities are just to tank as much damage as possible. I mean, it's the Hulk. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's the Hulk. He's supposed to be a giant green tank. Um, so I mean, I enjoy that kind of thing. And Captain America just—he uh, has just, the best moves. <laughs> Yeah, they, okay. yeah, he just has a lot of fun moves to do. Like throwing the shield's fun, but like again, it's sort of like um, when you're playing this game and all you do is just go from mission to mission, constantly beating the same sort of waves of enemies to get the higher gear to get to the to to the opportunity of facing like other things. And I will say this because I think I've played a bit more of the post. Uh, campaign missions than you have. That is true. And it does feel like a bit of a chore. Um, and it, and it, it just it's it, it just sort of like a, like okay I gotta do this I gotta do that or whatever. You, you have certain mm-hmm. dailies if you want to do stuff. And speaking of daily stuff, I, I also remember that this game has individual battle pass mechanics for each character, which is why I compared it to to Fortnite. Yeah, and the thing about that is that you need to do these certain like daily hero missions that are specific to each character. So it feels so like it, it feels like so designed to try to take up as much of your time as possible. Because if you I don't know for whatever reason if you like all of the characters and wanted to play all the characters and wanted to get. All their all the stuff from their battle pass. You're gonna be spending so much time mm-hmm. trying to like get all that stuff, and that's sort of the uh, the thing about Avengers and like game and these light service games about it is that they're they're very sort of time consuming. Mm-hmm. Like that's how they get you right. Like they like the the game developers for this want you to play as much as physically possible, mm-hmm. right? And like just. The thing is, and the thing is, I wouldn't mind it if the rewards were at least enjoyable. Yeah, because the thing is, is that the gear you get doesn't matter. They're just a it bunch of doesn't. It, it, it's just a bunch of nu- numbers. At least in like Destiny, when you get new armor or new guns, like first of all, your character will show off that armor right oh hell yeah and your guns and especially if they're you know the exotic type guns will do crazy shit i mean destiny year one gallarhorn was like the most coveted weapon of all time because it was a rocket launcher that once it hits the target will explode into smaller rockets that all home on your target and it was literally the best gun in the game i hated you because you because you got like 
you were one of the first people to get it, and I hated you for it. I didn't even get it from like a an exotic engram. It was just a legendary engram, and it just turned into Gallarhorn. And I didn't even know how good it was until I fully leveled it up, and I was like, "Oh shit, this is good." How come people don't talk about it any, uh, as much? And as soon as I talked about it in class, it's like, "You motherfucker, you have Gallarhorn." It's like, "Oh, I guess it is really good." <laughs> But yeah, yeah, you know, you have stuff like that in, in Destiny, and that sort of recreated in Destiny 2. But in, in Avengers, you don't get that. All your gear is basically just stat boosts for, like, certain, you know, like, attack, defense, and stuff like that. Mm. And your characters don't change whenever you get new gear. They will just look at, like, how they look, depending on which costume you get. And then we get to the costumes. And, and yeah, and, and and the big problem of the art design... Is that sometimes some of these costumes are either all right, like um, you know, uh, Hulk has his uh, Joe Fix It outfit look, which great, it looks great. Yeah, it looks good. Um, then you get uh, uh, Captain America, and some of his outfits are just him in like a test suit with his shirt off, and every every other uh, costume is good. And then you have. I think we will sp we're split here because my my opinion Thor has the worst costumes. Yeah, yeah, I feel Kamala just is very uninspired. Like some of her legendary costumes is literally just her wearing an Iron Man shirt and being like, and it's like, she's a fan. I I listen. I get Kamala's character. I get she's a fan girl. I get that you know, but it's just sort of like. Really? This is your best? Like, this is like. That, no, your, like, it's a legendary, so you have to work your ass off to get it. Yeah, it's sort of just like. Okay. And Thor, it. I can't. I can't describe it so well, because. Uh, I'm, okay, so I'm an artist, and, and so I love art. I love character designs. I love all that kind of stuff. So whenever I see, you know, something that really annoys me, you know, sometimes I'll say it, sometimes I'll keep it to myself. But this is one of the moments where, like, you know, I gotta say, it, Thor has some of the worst ones. Like, there's, like, one that I'm, like, a couple, one that's, like, cool. It's usually just one, and then just a bunch of color swaps. This one that, it's, like, supposed to be, like, 100% accurate to the comic. But because it looks, the the character model looks so much like Chris Hemsworth, it looks like, it looks like a dollar store costume you get from Party City or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, not even the good kind. Just, like, like, bro, you, like, think of, like, when you're at a costume party and you know that guy who, would like, just barely, you know, you know, put any effort into it, that's what it looks like. And I'm like, <sighs> you're trying to look like the, like you did in the original comics, I get that, but it just, it didn't, it did not translate well. Yeah, yeah. Which, is another thing, like, the game, it, apparently the game itself, I don't know, I've never experienced this, I don't know if you have. Mostly because I mostly played the the campaign and didn't see any of the bugs that came out with it. Yeah. But did you experience any bugs? Because it was apparently very buggy on release. Oh yeah, um, I experienced maybe one bug that I experienced at least three or four, no, two or three times. Where sometimes uh, I would do a finisher as Captain America, and for whatever reason, he would just just sometimes just get stuck in like a weird like upward position. Like, like it would act as though like uh, the ground was like perpendicular to mm -hmm. his feet, so he would just like be doing like this weird sort of like looking up kind of run thing. And I'm like, well, that's strange. And granted, it would he, it would fix itself obviously um, at, at a certain point as soon as he got to like something to interact with. It's like, oh, okay, he's fixed now. So that's like the only notable bug I've seen. Mm -hmm. but, but, but yeah, no, it was, this game was a, definitely, like, from what I've heard, a buggy mass when it came out. Yeah, and that's, kind of, I think, so here's the thing, when you, when, here's the thing we have, to, we, have, we have to come down to. It was very buggy. The fact that it had to include, like, loot, or, like, loot box kind of. Well, here's the thing, Microtransaction though. kind of thing. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing I, I forgot to mention. Avengers doesn't have loot box. So. Oh, that's right. It's, it's still microtransaction, isn't it? At least in terms of getting costumes and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, that was the thing at E3 2019 where, like, that was them trying to, essentially winning the crowd's favor. It's like, we won't put any sort of my, uh, loot boxes that, you know, will give you an advantage in, a, in the game or whatever. And mm -hmm. people were like, yeah. And then you quickly realize, wait, 
then but then when the news came out of like oh you're getting cosmetics but wait i have to buy them with real money and it's like or if you want you can just spend a couple hundred hours in the battle pass stuff it's like ah i see what you've done here <laughs> you, you forced me to pay yeah so yeah that's sort of the the it's still microtransactions it's just not random chance it's like you see the thing you want and you could totally get it in game. Yeah, it's gonna cost you like five bucks or more. Yeah, like if you're willing to spend five dollars to save an extra ten, twenty hours to grind it out to get enough in-game currency to buy the outfit. Which for most of you guys are like, well, that doesn't sound too bad. Remember, you just bought a sixty-dollar game, seventy or a hundred if you chose to go with any extra stuff. Oh yeah, especially if you're going for like special edition stuff, and then you're sort of just like, like um. Having to spend uh, a couple uh, hours trying to grind enough for your in-game currency, or maybe just spend five dollars. I mean, you know, for some people that's fine, right? Um, but for a lot of people, it's like, well, this is some scummy tactics to get more money out of us. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, because the sad thing about uh, the Avengers game is that it had a lot of potential. I think that's a lot. That's that's. I think that's like the common consensus is that it has potential. You can see the groundwork of what could be a great game, but sadly, I think because uh, it got review bombed like hell. Well, yeah, a lot of people were not really fond of it, mm -hmm. unless you were like a big outlet like say IGN. Well, yeah, but uh, even then, like the big outlets like that, like the, those games were more like. The campaign's fine, but once you're done with that, you're stuck with an endless grind, and it's sort of not fun anymore, mm -hmm. right? So, like, and I think, again, and, like, the biggest problem, especially now, right, since they started to lose players, and they're, I well, think... And the thing about losing players, because back in 83, 2019, they promised that they will always provide us with content. That stopped. I don't know where. No, it's definitely not out of nowhere. Um, Cause I, I remember this. It was like a couple weeks ago that they delayed. Uh, Cause I think they announced the first sort of like post game content, like on one of their like little mm -hmm. live streams. It was gonna be like a Kate Bishop, Hawkeye storyline, Ant Man, and a little bit of yeah, Ant Man was gonna be a character, and. Uh, I mean, he's a character in the game, but he's not like playable. He's just mm -hmm. like a side, he's like a side character, but he will be playable you know, post launch, which we don't know yet. <laughs> All we know is that Kate Bishop and Hawkeye Clint Barton uh, are going to be the first post launch characters, but they delayed it. Um, I'm assuming half because of current world circumstances, yeah. right, and other just to like you know, I'm assuming to, to prepare for releasing xbox series x and playstation 5 versions of these games right so yeah like and to make sure that at least comes out better than because <laughs> the thing is that content was supposed to come out last month mm -hmm. at, the time of this recording. at the time of this recording uh like october like mm -hmm. sort of mid to late october yeah and they had to delay it until next year i think so the content that was supposed to be coming out a month after the game to help you know, make sure the player base wouldn't wouldn't like not keep going down. At least start to come back up because, it, you know, people would come probably come back to play the game to play with, as the new characters. That gets delayed, and that just further causes, yeah, like a a a, a further downward spiral of losing players. So, it's kind of you know they were essentially uh, I think Crystal Dynamics, right? It's a, yeah. yeah under Square Enix we're basically in a in a rock and a hard place of having to figure out some way of like trying to maintain content that's still not ready and uh because it was remember this game was delayed that is very true it was supposed to come out in May of this year then current world circumstances happened so it was delayed till I think August August it was August and then further delayed till September right yes like like the first week of September. Yeah, the first week of September. Yeah, I so yeah, like can and, you and imagine if that if if the game came out in May, and we had to oh. wait until next year for the two Hawkeyes to come out? That would have been a lot worse. 
And there's a lot and of... And it's still buggy, too. There's Yeah, there's still a lot of bugs. And I think that's why a lot of the internet and a lot, a lot of people who cover game stuff sort of liken this game to being last year's Anthem. Yeah, because Anthem was another game that was, like, promised to be kind of the same thing as this game is with, like, a lot of crazy stuff. And I remember first watching it was, I think it was the E3 trailer, and I was like, holy sh! I, I would play this. But then I remember, oh, it's EA, and EA is kind of a shitty company. Yeah, it was BioWare's next new franchise, and, you know, BioWare, people love BioWare. And, uh, at least from what I've heard, that development cycle for that game is, like, all crazy. They didn't even know what game they were making until the E3 trailer came out. That's how, like... Basically, you're... You're giving me a sell pitch of a product you have. Don't you haven't even made up? Yeah, and as you can imagine, when it came out last year, early last year, I think it was February, March. I want to say it was February. Yeah, people like it was like, oh no, holy shit! <laughs> it's it, it's so. And I remember too, because there was some. There was this one dude I kind of found him annoying. I really didn't talk to him, but he, like he like he's one of those dudes who, like he'll talk to anyone. And he was like, man, I'm so excited for Anthem. Oh man, it's gonna be such a badass game. And me and like the rest of the guys who know about EAA's, you know, track record, we're like, should we tell him? No. Let him dream. Let him dream. Yeah, and that's sort of the issue with the with a lot of these game companies trying to make these live service games. Like Destiny, like had trouble, and it was the biggest one, right? Mm-hmm. And still has troubles. Yeah, Destiny, like Destiny Two, still has tr- a little bit of troubles even now, right? Um, I think the ongoing joke for Destiny is like Destiny players hate Destiny until new content, and then they go back to hating Destiny again. Yeah, yeah, it's so when when the biggest sort of example uh, in the trend center of this live service game of constant grind to get better loot and stuff, like the looter shooter genre. Had has still has troubles in trying to make sure there's enough good content for people to be engaged with. It it it, it just sort of like and that's the high bar, right? The division and division two are very sort of not mm, mixed bags. They're mixed bags. I remember being like, oh, this looks interesting, and then I then I then when I heard it was going to be like Destiny, I was like, oh no. And we're still getting that Halo Infinite apparently supposed to be live service. And you were like, for the love of God, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Yeah, but I feel like Halo's live serviceness will be more on the Fortnite side of things. Fair enough. Considering how they've handled uh, when uh, they added Reach to Master Chief Collection and they have that uh, sort of Battle Pass system. Mm. I hope that's what they mean by like a live service sort of game, right? Mm-hmm. Especially with the multiplayer being free. Uh, I assume that's kind of where they're leaning towards, just like have like a bow pass mechanic system, you know, which is like, which I think is perfectly serviceable because I, it'd be super weird if Halo turned looter shooter. It'd be so fucking weird. Like, yeah. But no, like not just that, but just the, the amount of content that was planned, the amount of stuff that was, it's not gonna happen. Heck, they even got criticized for. Not including Spider Man in the PC and Xbox version. That, yeah, I remember. Solely only for so for Sony, and a lot of people were like, "Well, yeah, because Sony owns Spider Man. Why wouldn't they, you know, have that exclusive?" Here's the thing: they don't own Square Enix. Yeah, the the, the thing about the Spider Man situation, and I, I I remember, I yeah, and thank you for reminding me about that. Um, like first of all, Sony only owns the movie rights. Yeah, they don't own the character, so mm-hmm. people saying that is like very they're, they're wrong. <laughs> they're just absolutely yeah. wrong. Um, but Spider Man, especially because of the PS4 game and Miles Morales um, coming out on PS5. Oh no, I guess also PS4. But um, you know that sort of uh, like I don't know. Sony definitely like has a bit more pull, and it kind of just sort of. I think that's it a, reeks of corporate. Yeah, it just reeks of like sort of like corporate ma- trying to maximize profits on that one system and saying that all the other systems, including PC, which is supposed to be graphically like the best one, 
yeah, graphically, if you're building a PC, it's going to look better than pretty much most gen consoles. Even now, like you could probably build a PC that looks that that runs games better than the newest gen consoles coming out right now. I think right now it's uh, it's kind of up in the air, but they're you know basically you're right. Yeah, you know, especially like I'm assuming like I mean, especially I guess when you say like before like the new next gen consoles have come yeah. out. Uh, yeah, you could build a PC that runs this the game better than it would be on an Xbox One X or a PS4 Pro. So to just content lock a big major character like one of the like probably the biggest marvel character the the marvel character <laughs> yeah on just one system just definitely reeks of sort of like we've got to have more money exactly money yeah so it's sort of just uh it's it's uh, avengers has had a in terms of production is very questionable at best very corporate at most yeah and, and it's kind of sad cause when you talk when it, when it just because uh when you sort of see that oh there's a lot of corporate mandated decisions here i mean hell there's even like there was even like those skins that were like based on like verizon wireless stuff holy shit i forgot about that like if you're a verizon wireless customer you can get skins and stuff like that for you for like they all like sort of have the verizon wireless colors and it's sort of just like this is just kind of egregious this is about as scummy as the uh cup noodles thing in final fantasy 15 you shut up about that i enjoyed that listen it was funny i i get it's funny and they made fun of it and it was a kind of a meta thing it's still kind of like i don't know it's kind of just immersion breaking to me it's sort of like i'm like in this weird pseudo uh, modern slash fantasy aesthetic world, and I just see cup noodles there. You mean and to yeah. tell me in the world of Final Fantasy fifteen on the continent of whatever the fuck it's called, you have a magic fucking crystal and stuff, and like the one thing this this universe shares with our universe, besides you know people being there, is that cup noodles developed as well. And I said it's screen. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> I love that game. Yeah. It's so out there, it's so random. I mean, don't get me wrong. I I like playing it, but there's definitely flaws in that game. Um, yeah, I'm not denying that. Yeah, but point is, I um, could make a whole episode on that. Yeah, but I'm not, because no one will talk to me about it. Yeah, I wouldn't even want to talk about that. You bitch. Uh, but yeah, point is, um, it's not Avengers, Marvel's Avengers by Crystal Dynamics and Square Enix. Like they they essentially flew too close to the live service game sun of wanting to make this a live service game and try to maximize profits. I'm assuming because corporate wise, you have access to the one of the biggest licenses in the world, the, mm-hmm. the Avengers, which you know last year came off of one of the biggest movies of all time, like the highest grossing movie of all time, right? Literally the number one. Yeah. So it's like, how can we not try to make as much money off of this game as possible? But in doing so, before they even knew what they were doing, they packaged, they packaged it, they put it on the market, and now they're selling, and then they stop selling. It was a Jurassic Park reference. Yeah, no, I was like, this is a reference to something. I just yeah, can't it, put it together. Yeah, it's when Jeff Goldblum talked about, like, you know. No, and you're not wrong because I like even even when I was playing the game, there were moments that I'm like, this feels like corporate because I mean for some people like there's moments where like they don't like the fact that hey look there's the actual comic book that you can go out and buy, but I actually kind of like that because one hey I can go buy that comic, but two it shows you the history of the character. Yeah, like the weird thing is is that there's there's still like some love put into this game, right? Mm-hmm. They do, like, I remember, like, the the live streams where they talk about the development of the game, and they sort of, like, you know, they, they definitely seem to be very sort of, like... They're fans. Yeah. Like, clearly there's people that like the Marvel properties and stuff like that. And, you know, having the collectibles being these comics from, like, old generations, like, like super old comics. Like, like Golden Age, Silver Age, all the way to now. Yeah. Like, that's kind of neat. But... It definitely seems like they were. It feels like the studio, uh, Crystal Dynamics, was sort of forced to like go down this route because mm-hmm. I think most people agree that this game would have been better 
if they just try to like not go full live service and mm-hmm. s- truly stick to just like a nice single player campaign, maybe some co op stuff because maybe 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 you know delay it a couple more years, one or two. Yeah, you know, just to like get that stuff together because mm-hmm. you know it's very hard for a live service game to be a, a good thing because mm-hmm. i'll say this probably the most fun i've ever had with a game that can be kind of described as a live service game would probably be monster hunter world no yeah that, that's a pretty fun game <laughs> but mainly because much like how in destiny one right you would get certain gear and loot and stuff mm-hmm. and you would feel super strong that's sort of the same thing in, in, in monster hunter world on top of the fact that killing certain monsters is a struggle, right? What, the, what was that one that looks like a T Rex and has feathers? And it's stuff? the Anginath, if I remember correctly. It's I hated that one. Yeah, no. I didn't even finish the game, and I hated that thing. Yeah, no. It, it's it's like the first truly hard monster you fight in the early game, and once you get, and I remember grinding against other monsters to get like a good enough weapon to fight against him right and once that happened and once i finally learned his like all his freaking moves and what he would do when he's starting to get low on health and stuff like that i i was like yes i feel accomplished i get his parts now i can maybe make something out of his out of him like a new weapon and then later on when they essentially introduce harder difficulty versions of those monsters including that monster i was like hey all right this is gonna be this and I, i remember all the stuff from it and i was pretty much prepared knew what i was going into and it still felt satisfying because it's still a hard fight but you know knowing what you need to do and still having having to grind the right equipment you feel super strong and you feel happy when and you feel so calm the fuck down when you when you you're lucky enough to have like the environment hurt it for you right and that's the, the, also the cool thing about that game you know all, the monsters will sometimes fight each other i remember one run I think it was like the last run. I think I, I, when I was trying to beat it, like uh, the Rathalos came and it was like beating the shit out, of it. and it's like, oh my god, this is my chance. So I'm you know, gonna, I was gonna wait for my prey. Yeah, and, and, and I think that's a game that does it well, right? Mm-hmm. Because the grind is fun. It's satisfying. It's so satisfying when you finally are able to kill a monster you've had so much trouble with, mm-hmm. using its parts, and then the next time you face it again, you know. Ex- what you need to do to fight it and kill it mm-hmm. and, you know, get better stuff for it. Yeah. Like, you feel super strong and the armor and, and the weapons you get look super cool. So you feel super cool, you feel strong, strong and the monsters are always challenging, right? Yeah, and that's and that's kind of my thing with, with like, say, with Avengers. And I, I, like I said, I don't hate the game. I don't. I, I can see the love they put into it, the, the references, the callbacks, you know, like, the moments of like you you show you're showing how much of your fan you are of this fucking Kamala Khan, literally in the first mission when you're playing as little Kamala, you know, she she's getting belittled. There's like a, some gatekeeping shit of like you know you're not a real fan, you're not a real Kamala fan or whatever, you're not a real Kamala, a Captain America fan. And then she sits there and quotes the 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 line that Cap says during Civil War in in the book, but also they also mention in the movie. You know, the one where Sharon Carter is like, you know, it's, you can't compromise and you got to stand by the river truth and tell them no. Yeah, yeah, Like yeah. that. And that was like, wow. You, you Not only did you quote the comic, which is really great, it felt satisfying seeing her do that. You were like rooting for her. And then Cap shows up and like, here you go, kid. That's for, he's a, he's a free comic. Yeah. <laughs> which yeah. is funny, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think, yeah, moments like that. Are definitely like some of the highlights of the campaign but once you're done with the campaign all you have is the grind and it's not fun you know it's kind of boring granted i will say this mm-hmm. for me and i don't know if i don't know if a whole lot of people uh are on you with are agreeing with you this would agree with me on this right but the gameplay felt always felt to me like dynasty warriors-esque right because the basics of the game is you press X, you press Y sometimes, and that's similar to Dynasty Warriors. And I can tolerate Dynasty Warriors. Dynasty Warriors is also a sort of like game where you just, uh, you know, beat up a ton of enemies. 
So the difference with Dynasty Warriors and uh, Marvel's Avengers is that in Dynasty Warriors, you can one-shot all the mooks, right? Mm -hmm. You just one hit and they're dead, right? And it's only the boss characters that you really have to focus on. Mm -hmm. So you have the satisfaction of playing a character and then doing a ton of damage, beating up just hundreds of enemies, right? So when I compare that, and I so when I say that, right, as I compare it to Dynasty Warriors, it's sort of like if I was playing the Hulk and I just wanted to just absolutely rip and tear all these robots, mm. it just feels just so unsatisfying sometimes mm. when I'm just fighting against the basic level robots and enemies, and it still takes like four or five hits just to kill them, and I'm like. I'm the Hulk. I should be able to rip them in half. This should just be a one-two, maybe. Come on. You know? Yeah. Especially since you grind with him for so long. Yeah, I think... Oh, I guess now... I think... The last time I played the game, which was like a couple weeks ago, I think Cap probably has the highest level. Mm -hmm. Followed by Hulk. But for a while, Hulk was definitely like my highest level character. Just because, again, he's a tank... And he would, I would just play him as a tank. I would just rush in and just tank as much damage mm -hmm. and let the AI handle a lot of other stuff. So, you know. But yeah, you know, it's, you know, looking at all the fallout from Marvel's Avengers, it is a bit sad. Because mm -hmm. it's not, again, at least that it's not a terrible, it's not a horrible game. Yeah, it's not the worst thing I've ever played. No. But it's, I guess, it's just so corporate with a lot of the things it does mm -hmm. and it could have been so much better than what especially it is especially writing off in terms of marvel games writing off marvel uh, marvel spider-man for the playstation exactly right because that game like i don't even own a playstation i would buy a playstation just for spider-man and all the stuff that i've seen i'm like this is the game I, <laughs> this is the spider game spider-man game i've always wanted yeah so it's so weird that this game just did not live to that like expectation, right? Mm -hmm. Heck, even Marvel Ultimate Alliance three, I think for some people is probably at least a, a bit better of a game than this, right? Mm -hmm. Just because it's more of like sort of a listen, Cap, Wolverine, Strange, and Ghost Rider. Those were that was my team, and that was the team I'm going to go with all the time. Yeah, you know, it's it's pretty... I mean, it's, it's sort of a kind of an adaptation of, like, the yeah. Infinity uh, uh, Gauntlet storyline, kind of, you know. But, yeah, it, it's it's fun because you get to have all these characters, right? Mm -hmm. And in Marvel's Avengers, like, you only have, them like, these six characters. And more will come for free. Well, we'll see. Yeah, yeah which is the justification for why we have these microtransactions in this game in the first place and sort of, like... Like, you know, you're getting all the post-launch content for free. There's no season pass. But, I mean, if you want some cosmetic skins that you really yeah. want, you gotta buy it, right? Yeah. That's a sad fact. And, honestly, I feel like we can keep going, but I think we're at a point where, like, we're just kind of... We kind of we're, we're basically gonna be repeating the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's sort of, uh... That's sort of the reason... I think the reason why Marvel's Avengers just couldn't live up to it. I mean, the reason, you know, they, they lost so much money, that's why we started, I wanted to do this episode. What happened? Why did this happen? Um, what were the things? And I, honestly, there could have been, there's probably a lot more that we didn't even mention, and I recommend, you know, looking that stuff up, because there's some stuff that even I missed, something even he missed. Yeah, there's definitely, I, I kind of want to see the sort of behind the scenes of what... I say that for a lot of games. Yeah, like, what the heck were they thinking, right? Again, I could do an episode on fifteen because I, I learned some stuff that were, that no one's in, no one wants to talk to me about it. <laughs> but yeah, that's sort of uh, and it's weird because that's Square Enix too. Yeah, Square Enix. What the fuck, man? Hopefully, sixteen is good. But anyways, I think that's a good ending point for us to to close this out. Um, thank you guys for taking the chance to listen to us. You can find us on social media on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at the Gangsterians. And if you go to the Instagram, you'll be able to find us, find our link tree that will lead you to all of our podcasting sites that we are official on, like Castbox, Apple, Apple Pod, Castbox, Apple Podcasts, Cool Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, all the good stuff. Also, you have a link to our YouTube where you can see our beautiful mugs. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say we're that beautiful, but you know, you get, you get the point. But anyways, you, you can once you're on YouTube, you can you know comment, like, subscribe, tell us what we can do better from there. 
Also, there's a link to our Patreon where you can support us. It's not, you know, it's not really micro. Thankfully, it's not microtransactions, so that's a good thing. So, <laughs> it's just supporting us so that we can do more. Yeah. And ye- that's about it. Yeah. Guys, thanks for taking this chance to listen. Hopefully, you know, maybe in the future, Marvel's Avengers game, the Marvel's Avengers game, it'll be a lot better. It'll be a lot more stuff. I don't know. I don't know the future. I mean, you know, No Man's Sky has now become a really good game now. Ever since uh, 2016, where uh, you know. Oh Jesus Christ! That was a. Yeah. That yeah. was a. That was a. Yeah, that was not a great launch from No Man's Sky, but now it's like super acclaimed and stuff. And I kind of like actually kind of want to try try it. Right. Yeah. So they can pull it off. Meanwhile, you also get stuff like Fallout 76, which came out bad and continues to be bad. So Todd Howard, why do you sell us these sweet little lies? It just works. God damn it, Todd Howard. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thanks for check- thanks for listening to us. I hope you guys have a good one. It's been your boy Eli. It's me, Joe. And we got the Kings and Turns. Uh, you guys have a good one. Peace.